What's up guys, it's your boy Jamal back again with another video. Today I'm going to be talking about the M1 iPad Pro and the Galaxy Tab S6. I uploaded a video approximately like a few days ago or last week about the Tab S6 and I stated that it was a good budget alternative because of the price dropping and it being an older device to other devices so for me I am an artist I'm a tech enthusiast as well but I'm an artist so I'm looking at it from more of an art perspective however you can still find this you helpful if in case you're on the fence of whichever you want to want to get so I'll be looking through things like the hardware the software and also the drawing apps and the differences between that so we'll get started on that but before that please hit the like button subscribe share this with your friends and family and uh, let's boost up this subscriber count my goal for this year in 2023 is to stay consistent with these videos and uh, stay consistent with art so that I can turn it into something beneficial more monetarily beneficial for myself so um, I just say that to say help and support if you if you like these uh, videos and yeah so we'll just get into it so I'm gonna go through the specs first and then after I go through the specs we're gonna discuss um, we're gonna discuss the software because that's where the real difference is so by the way for those who don't know we have the M1 iPad Pro on this side right here and on this side we have the Galaxy Tab S6 so the Galaxy Tab S6 I spoke about in the last video so I'm gonna start with the M1 iPad Pro so this is the M1 iPad Pro came out in 2021 so that's not too long ago uh, it came out in April 20 2021 or it was released in May 20 so I think it was announced in April 20 2021 uh, the dimensions I'm not gonna get all that into but this is the 11 inch variant uh, so it has an LCD panel instead of the uh, micro LED. Um, it does support HDR10. It has a uh, screen brightness of 600 nits. It is uh, 11 inches as I stated. Uh, it does have some scratch resistant uh, oleophobic coating. It currently runs iPad OS 6.1 if I'm not mistaken but I think I'll check that out when we get into the software. There are various uh, different configurations you can get for it. On the base model, you can get the 126, which I don't re recommend for any type of device in 2023, but this, the 126, eight gigabytes of RAM, you have 256, eight gigabytes of RAM, 512, eight gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 2 terabyte, 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, it is running the M1, which is a desktop-esque or desktop class processor. So this is the full M1. It's the same one you can find in some Macs and in uh, some of the Mac books. So it does offer a lot of performance. It has cameras if you care about cameras on tablets. It's a 12 megapixel f1.8 uh, 1 over 3 10 megapixel uh, that's a 12 uh, 12 megapixel one that I just mentioned and then the 10 megapixel one is an f1.4 um, it's an ultra wide and then there's a 3d lidar scanner on there and then there's a flash it supports up to 4k at 24 frames per second 25 frames per second and 30 and 60 frames per second so that's pretty good because you cannot get that on this. Um, and it also has, I think, 8, 1080p for the front camera uh, at 25 frames per second, 30, 60, and 120, and 240 FPS. Okay, so no, that's the main, those are the main cameras. The selfie camera is a 12 megapixel camera, um, and it supports up to 1080p. No headphone jacks on either, 
of these devices so if you're an audiophile or you're looking to use it for audio you're gonna need a dongle or best to avoid the devices and get yourself a laptop so it supports uh wi-fi 802.11 a b g n a c 6 and dual band also a hotspot bluetooth 5.0 it has GPS and all the run-of-the-mill things that you'd expect from a two, 2023 or 2021 device, sorry. So, let's go through what the Tab S6 has. The Tab S6 came out in 2019, or was announced in July of 31st of 2019, came out in August of 2019, so basically 2020, if you think about it. Um, it's ten. This is a 10-inch display. But it has a different aspect ratio than the iPad. So because of the difference in the aspect ratio, the height is almost the same. But this is way more narrow, as you can see, than this, which is a little bit more chunky, more paper-like. Uh, no pun intended because of the uh, screen protector. Um, it has Super AMOLED, which you, as soon as you see the displays, you will tell the difference and you most likely eight out of ten times will choose this display over this one just based on how it looks screen density or like uh, pixel density 287 here that's almost 300 265 almost 300 but not quite there yet so this is less pixel dense however on the day-to-day -day, you're not going to be able to tell the difference in sharpness that much at least not for me uh this in terms of software updates came out with Android 9 and it's upgraded both to Android 12L which it currently runs it has a Snapdragon 855 it supports micro SD card slots which this does not something you want to consider if you're going to use it for actual work uh, it has UFS 3.0 which is really good really fast I can vouch for that myself and it also has a 13 megapixel camera, 5 megapixel front. Uh, both cameras are not really much to write home about. So, yeah. Um, they're both okay if you want to scan. Uh, Wi-Fi 802.11, A, B, G, N, A, C. Dual band Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi Direct is also supported, which is really lovely. If you have Mac devices, you don't need to worry about that on the iPad. It also supports Dex. Um, it has a 7,040 milliamp hour battery non-removable. I didn't speak about the battery on this. This has a 7538 uh, milliamp hour battery, a larger battery, but uh, we'll get into battery life right after. Let me. I'll talk about that right after this. So yes, um, the starting prices of these, this came out was about 870 euros. You can probably find it for cheaper. And this came out about 600 euros. You, you'll find it way cheaper. I'm sure you can find it around maybe 200 in the $200 range, USD 300 CAD. Um, so you can find this for probably way cheaper. However, keep in mind that this has Android 12 L that's the last update this is getting to my knowledge so after that you're on your own it will have some security updates for a while but I'm not sure how long I think it has one more year and then there will be a need to update basis so if it needs an update for security reasons they'll push it out um, even devices like the S5 get updates every now and then up until like like up until last year. So uh, they might even still be pushing out updates. So you don't really need to worry about that. So it's also this has a fingerprint scanner under the screen and also supports face detection. This has Face ID. Face ID works very well, but no fingerprint scanner. So you have to look at it and make sure that you can see the light blinking over there. That's Face ID trying to find me. So this is a little bit more, uh, I mean, 
statistically they say this is more secure but i would trust this a little bit more because in my experience my brother has been able to unlock my face id on my iphone before on my old iphone i don't have it anymore so now that's out of the way let's talk about battery the battery on this is noticeably smaller spec wise but it lasts a lot longer than the ipad the ipad on a good day gets me um about four to five hours of screen on time consistently for the last two years that i've had this device i've gotten about five to six sometimes seven hours of screen on time even while drawing this consistently lasts longer than the ipad it's not quite quite as powerful but if you're not using it for certain heavy duty things you won't even really notice okay so the battery life on the ipad is noticeably worse than the samsung despite being newer i've had them off of the charger for around the same amount of time and well in terms of battery life there's not much else to say except the samsung is better wow the magnets are sticking to each other <laughs> all right so that now that we have battery life out of the way we've, we've spoken about specs i'm going to talk about in-app differences or the availability of certain apps so here we have sketchbook pro if you're an artist you're going to use drawing apps so for the artists if you decide to use these devices for art you need to be aware that when you use the Samsung device you're going to be at a distinct disadvantage when it comes to app availability and quality what do I mean by app availability and quality so we have sketchbook this is essentially the same app when you look at the top tab the layout is even considerably different when you go into preferences which is essentially settings you can see the layout is totally different they were the same a few months ago but an update came in which the iPad was given a lot more features so now with the iPad you're able to use group layers you're able to different locks alpha locks you're able to um use new br newer brushes so there's a new brush set let me see if i can get the, my brush panel well what's going on i will say though there are a lot more glitches on the ipad than on the samsung sometimes all right so when you go into your brush panel on both you'll see that there's quite a difference. So there's a lot more variety and newer brushes and it's easier to, to add newer brushes. Some of it might be down to error, user error, I don't know. Also the general smoothness of the UI is uh, not really comparable. If I just even swipe out, go to the uh, recents, it's just generally smoother. That could also be due to animations, but it's just a generally smoother experience. So now that we have that one out of the way, also let's look at Procreate. With Procreate, you don't even have the alternative for that on the Samsung, but you do have these apps. So what I have here is Artflow, forget Behance, forget Canva, Clip Studio, uh, Flip a Clip, Infinite Painter, uh, Krita, Medibang. Medibang is available on the iPad and so is Artflow. And PenUp is a Samsung 
exclusive app that probably is not worth having unless I don't know. So here's another app that I used for my podcast. Let's talk about it with Dumak on Spotify and other streaming services. Shameless plug. So for example, this app here, Anchor, if you want to use it for podcasts, you can use it in landscape or portrait mode. Also, you can just generally tell that the UI is more well thought out. So if I want to, I cannot use it in landscape mode. When it comes to Instagram, it's a different story. With Instagram, it is essentially not even the phone app. It is something totally different on the iPad. So with that, I have to give it to the um, Samsung, hands down, because with the iPad, you don't even have a real full screen experience. It's literally this small little thing that you can blow up in size. And when you change it to portrait mode, it's the same thing, except just like this. So there's, there's that. And also you can't go live on the iPad on, but you can go live on the, um, Samsung. And if you share, if you share artwork from Procreate, maybe to your story on Instagram. Let me demonstrate. So let's say you want to share your artwork. I have this artwork I've done here. You want to share your artwork to Instagram. You hit JPEG, PNG, or whatever you want to use. Instagram. Story. So when you have Instagram open... Let's look at the difference in stories. You have the option for live, real, story, post. When you want to create, like let's say a post, and you hit this little smiley face, these are the options you get on your Galaxy tab, and you can add music. These are the options you get on your iPad. So let's say we just use the regular degular iPad. You only get post and story, no live, nothing else. When you want to create, then you can use music and other things. But you still don't get the option to go live. Maybe I don't know where it's, it's tucked away, but it seems like it doesn't exist. If you know, let me know in the comment section down below. But from what I see, this is what it is. Hey there, Editor Dumak here. I wanted to add something to the review. TikTok. TikTok is a big platform now. So this might be relevant to whoever. So TikTok is different on both tablets. On, on the uh, Galaxy tab... This is how it is in landscape mode. Uh, actually, in portrait mode. Getting into landscape mode sometimes is a little wonky. Not very smooth. But the overall experience is better. So this is the user interface. On the Galaxy tab, you have uh, your like and all this stuff over here. And you have another tab here. So you can see your comments in a totally separate tab. The overall experience is generally better and well thought out. TikTok on the iPad in landscape mode is not the same. So you see, you do have a separate side, but no separate tab. So it comes, the, the comments come up and cover about half, more than half of the screen. So if you're big on TikTok, and that's important to you. You might want to consider the user interface uh, back to your normal schedule viewing. I don't have Twitter installed on both, but I can tell you that the experience of Twitter and Facebook 
are better on the iPad. Um, also, YouTube Studio is better on the iPad. Some games work slightly better here in terms of the use of display. Some of them don't seem to be fully optimized for the display here, but in general, the gaming performance is better on the iPad hands down as it should be because it's a way more powerful chip. It's better GPU, better CPU. Uh, you can't go wrong. Some people might ask, what about the RAM inside of this device right here? Both of them have eight gigs bytes of RAM. This has VRAM, but uh, from my knowledge, iOS lets apps and developers take more advantage of more RAM when needed, which is why this has the VRAM as a backup. And it doesn't, at first on um, on Android, there was a lot of crashing. There used to be a lot of issues. Now it's generally more stable. But when I use apps or the apps I use, especially for drawing, when I import something like a PSD, it is horrible. It doesn't even work 90% of the time. So opening PSDs in any app on this that is not like Photoshop, um, and it's not real Photoshop, it's like Photoshop Touch. And that is a little janky. It doesn't work. But on Procreate, on the iPad, works every single time. So if I open up um, a PSD, I usually what I do is I send a PSD from sketchbook to my OneDrive within let's say two three minutes I can send this so let me demonstrate that so let's demonstrate you go to gallery save saving also takes a longer time I'm gonna let it do this in real time so you can see how long it takes and what you're dealing with why would you send PSDs to your iPad? I send PSDs because, uh, let me rename this real quick. Let's say red 17, done. Export PSD, which is how I do it. Export PSD, open OneDrive. I have a folder. I call that folder art from sketchbook and save. Then I'm gonna open my OneDrive here. Then I'm gonna go to art from sketchbook. And it was red 17, so that's gonna be down here. And we'll wait. Let's see how long this takes. So it should come through right around here. I think I turned back on the, yeah, it's almost done uploading. It's basically done. All right, done. Come on. I don't know, sometimes it takes a while, but yeah, there we go. Red 17. Open in another app. And then I'll open it in Procreate. Okay, there we go, Red 17 is right over there. So I have Red 17 with all my layers intact on my iPad from sketchbook on the uh, Tab S6. Color is way different also because of the screen protector and also the color profile of the, of the tablet itself. But yes, essentially these are the same this is the same project, all with the same amount of layers. 
So there you go. So there are other minor differences when using the two devices and I've already expounded on performance. Performance is significantly better here. The drawing experience is smoother. I, due to dexterity and how the pen feels on the tip of the glass, I'm still used to using the Tab S6. But there are other things that I find annoying, like uh, file management. It's not really very good on the iPad, in my opinion. It's really janky. It's really, it's hit or miss, and then it's not consistent. So sharing files, like how easy it was to share this file with other applications that are not this, it is a nightmare sometimes. So when it comes to file sharing and overall uh, like usage of different file management systems, I have to give it to the galaxies just way better. So apart from that, maybe you wanna do some video editing. DaVinci Resolve is on the iPad and it's free does that there are other alternatives and then if you're an APK do type of person then I don't need to tell you <laughs> what there are APKs and stuff you can do so there's that the gaming situation mostly the same some titles release first on Android now which wasn't the case some years ago but those all those titles are here. They play better. Apex Legends plays better. I think I've mentioned that before. There's some great games. If you want a dedicated gaming video, that I, I'm open to that. But I really mostly want to focus on the artistic things. So when it comes to art apps for now, I mean, Clip Studio should be close. I can open up Clip Studio. Let me open this one up on both and we can compare it. I don't use Clip Studio in my day to day. So I'm not really in the position to tell you which is better or which is worse. Okay, so there's some new features here for fall. That will allow you to do certain things. As you can see, drawing is really good. If you want to see a video where I challenge myself to actually do some art in Clip Studio, also let me know in the comments down below. As you can see, oh, that's not good. Where do I change the brush size? Tool settings, cancel. So it could be because the canvas size is quite large, but even then in Sketchbook Pro, a canvas of this size, but the DPI settings wouldn't be the same. And the DPI is lower here. So I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt and get to know the app before I judge it. So there's that. There's also Krita. Krita is not available here, but with um, Procreate and other apps, it's not really necessary. And we also have Calipeg, which is also another decent, um, another decent animation app. We have Clip Clip on both. And for the most part, it is also decent. So looking at the apps, looking at the uh, battery life of both, looking at also the tools. Let's talk about the S Pen real quick. So the tools, this does not come in the box. Let's look at the, the tools. You have the S Pen, actually, let's look at the tools. We have the S Pen and we have the Apple Pencil. Does not come in the box and it will run you about almost 300 CAD, almost 200 USD, around those prices. I don't have the exact figures. 
even if you lose this and get want to get a replacement you can get one for like 30 bucks and it will work just fine so also they're interchangeable these are wacom styluses basically so you can use any wacom stylus that works with their digitizers on this and it will work just fine so comparing the two um this is actually not I think with the iOS 16 update, it works better with the user interface now, but before it was, um, it was just really good for drawing and not much else. This is still better in terms of interacting with the user face, but it feels cheap and not really worth much money, I guess, which is why it's free. <laughs> but when you use it to draw, it's, it's quite accurate. Does this job well? No complaints here. I've done enough projects in, with uh, the stylus. I have no complaints. And also because it's light, even despite the fact that it's cheap, when you use it for longer periods of time, you don't feel any fatigue or anything. Very nice, very wieldy, easily replaceable. The only thing is that the nibs also run down, but the same happens to the Apple Pencil, especially with the paper protect screen protectors, which I have on. So you might, I don't know if that matters much to you, but this right here, Magic, this is also very, very, very incredible. Feels way better, 10 out of 10 times better than the S Pen from Samsung. But you will have to get a new nib eventually. You can see that it's kind of eaten through all the friction. So there's that. So we've gone through apps, we've gone through battery life, we've gone through all other things. Um, the hardware is nearly identical. They both have quad speakers. They're both made of aluminum, both very well made, both thin and light. You can see both of them have quad speakers. Sorry about that. Well, the quad speakers. But this isn't that kind of reviews. So, the thing is, the question is not really which one do you pick. It's uh, which one can you live with? Because at the end of the day, depending on what you're using them for, if you're just streaming videos and movies and stuff, you're going to have a better time with this, especially because of the display. Also because of the battery life. If you're a casual gamer and not really a competitive, you're going to be able to play 90% of the games you want on this. It will work just fine. It won't have super high frame rates, but if you're, not, if you're not used to it, you don't need it. Gaming on this is considerably better. You can find this for a, a more... It's going to be more expensive, but drawing on this, gaming on this, much better notice we flashed it if you can get the if you can afford the 12 inch model with the mini led go for that but maybe size is a, a, a problem you want something more pocketable well i think there's also like ipad minis with capable hardware around the same price but if you, you can find yourself a newer samsung device which is a, a, a an identical but better experience than this Go get yourself a new one. But if you find one of these, and maybe you're just an an entry level artist, or not even just an entry level artist, but you you want something good that you can use, um, that works good with peripherals as well that you can um get by with if maybe you don't have a laptop. You want to use Word, Microsoft Word, and stuff, and you don't need it super professional. This is your guy. This right here. This is Old Faithful. It works really good. It does what it needs to do. And if you can find it for an affordable price or any of the newer ones, I'd say go for it. But as it stands now for art, the, the iPad, even though it pains me to say that because I'm not really an Apple dude, this is your guy right here. The only problem is battery life is horrendous. At the time I started this video... I've lost over 
battery, you could probably check and see for yourself it's at 50 right now. Whereas this, the battery is almost the same as it was when I started doing the video. So um, there's that. And if the models after this have anything similar in terms of battery life and performance, like even if the, I know that the performance is better with the seven and the eight and in the upcoming nine, if that's going to be a thing or whatever it's going to be called, the battery is going to be way better. And if that's the case, and then you also want to watch movies and you just want to type and use my, go with this right here. If iOS is not your thing. And I'm sure that the apps will perform way better because specs do matter a whole lot when using applications or video editing or anything. But if you're not doing anything above that, it's a great alternative. But for right now, if you're an artist, I say go iPad until perhaps Procreate makes its way to Android. So that's going to be it for this one. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comment section now below. I appreciate anybody who's been rocking with me. We're going to keep it very, very, very consistent this year. And we are going to hit our goals. See you in the next video.